Thanks very much for staying with us. Time now for Eye on Africa with me, Georgia Calvin Smith. Tonight, street protesters angrily reject the outcome of the weekend's election in the Comoros. President Azali Asumani has been returned for a fourth term, and his opponents say the Electoral Commission skewed results in his favour. Also, former Ugandan presidential candidates and government critics say that they've been put under house arrest as Kampala receives regional leaders for a summit aimed at discussing some of the conflicts destabilizing East Africa. And in the Africa Cup of Nations, hosts Ivory Coast lose out 1-0 to Nigeria's Super Eagles with a second-half penalty, whilst Equatorial Guinea delivers a 4-2 victory over Guinea-Bissau before Titans, Ghana and Egypt meet. But first, at least one person's been killed and dozens injured in violent protests that followed the re-election over the weekend of President Azali Asumani, who returns for a fourth term. Now, Thursday saw a second day of turbulent street demonstrations by critics who say that his win was fixed. A curfew had been brought in Wednesday night until 6 a.m. the next morning. Clarice Fortuné with more. Residents of Moroni woke up once again to scenes of devastation. Even the rain could not erase signs of a violent night, despite a curfew. There were reports of young men throwing stones at security forces, which in turn responded with tear gas. We burnt down official buildings. We had no choice. Yesterday, when it was night and when the curfew started, the military soldiers came armed with knives. They threw tear gas at us. We are not intimidated, not scared. This morning, we came back on the road. This is an important fight for us. Six people were admitted in hospital and one 21-year-old man died. For today, we have seven admissions due to the demonstrations, including a little seven-year-old child who is not seriously injured because he was sent home. But the six other, it was probably by gunshot. And there is one dead with serious head trauma, probably by gunshots. Tensions are high after President Azalia Soumani won re-election with 63% of the vote and a low 16% turnout figure. But the opposition denies being behind what the candidate said was a spontaneous uprising. The defeated challengers have called for a national day of protest to be held on Friday. Meanwhile, Asumani's victory is expected to be confirmed by the Comoros Supreme Court at the weekend. Nigeria's former central bank governor will face 14 new criminal charges, including forgery, fraud and criminal breach of trust. Godwin M.F. Yeli held the post for nine years before being forced to resign last year following his arrest and detention. M.F. Yeli's case is one of the highest profile corruption investigations under President Bola Tinubu. The new charges follow a special probe into the central bank's affairs that found that M.F. Yeli and others had embezzled $1.3 million. He's due to be indicted on Friday. East African regional bloc EGADS kicked off its 42nd session of heads of state and government in Uganda. Now, the summit was meant to tackle tensions between Ethiopia and Somalia after Addis Ababa acknowledged Somaliland as a sovereign state. But in a rare precedent, Ethiopia declined to participate. The other notable absentee from the summit is Sudan. Conflict's been raging there since April. More than 13,000 people have been killed. Our regional correspondent tells us more about what this meeting could mean for Khartoum. Members of the regional bloc EGAD are now in Uganda, where talks have begun this Thursday. Now, on the agenda is to try and find a resolution to the ongoing conflict in Sudan. But that's going to be a lot more difficult than it was initially hoped, and that's because the head of the army, Abdel Fattah al burhan isn't in Uganda. Uh, he rejected the invitation by EGAD because the regional bloc had also invited Hamedti, the head of the paramilitary rapid support forces, who the government has been at war with since last April. Now, in a statement, Abdel Fattah al burhan said, and I quote, uh, that the invitation to Hamedti was a violation of Sudan's sovereignty and a serious breach of the IGAD Charter. Now, he's since uh, suspended any cooperation with the bloc. Uh, Hamedti, on the other hand, has accepted uh, the invitation. He's currently in uh, Uganda, and this is the latest of a series of foreign trips that he's made in the last few weeks.
weeks. Uh, he's been everywhere, really. He's been to South Africa. He's been to Ethiopia. He's even been here to Kenya. And he says that the objective of these foreign trips is to find a resolution to the war in Sudan. Uh, but analysts say that the real reason is to secure regional support and political legitimacy so that he can capture all of Sudan from the army. Analysts have also said uh, that in order for long-term peace to be secured in Sudan, it is crucial that both warring sides agree to sit uh, at the negotiating table together. Well, as that summit on regional conflicts got underway in Uganda on Thursday, it sparked some trouble. Uganda's most notable political opposition figures say that they've been surrounded by security forces ahead of a planned protest. Clement Diruma brings us more. Uganda's main opposition leader, Bobby Wine, says that he's being held under house arrest after calling for protests in Kampala at this Thursday. Various opposition parties had planned on rallying their supporters to speak out against the government, its uh, infrastructure management and the imprisonment of opponents. Police have admitted to having deployed forces around Bobby Wine and Kiza Besigye's houses. Both are vocal critics of longtime President Yoweri Museveni and unsuccessful candidates in a presidential elections. Kampala's police say uh, measures were taken Thursday to prevent illegal political gatherings. Uh, despite this, social media images show a few a dozen protesters uh, navigating damaged streets to highlight Kampala's poor road conditions. The uh, uh, protest timing was a strategic choice. The capital is hosting international uh, summits, including uh, the G77 China and the Non-Aligned Movement Summits, the largest gathering of countries from the Global South. Uh, delegates from over 100 nations have arrived in Uganda for the meetings. Earlier this week, the uh, opposition had condemned the expulsions and closure of roadside shops by authorities uh, trying to manage the image of the capital ahead of the arrival of foreign dignitaries. There's been an uptick in violence in Mozambique's northern province of Cabo Delgado. Insurgents have launched at least 12 attacks over the past month. Communities are particularly worried about what that means for the security as the Southern African Development Community mission in Mozambique is in the process of withdrawing. The surge in attacks could also have a big effect on the operation of multi-billion gas projects in the region. Our correspondent with more. After a relative stable period, the Cabo Delgado region in the north of Mozambique has once again seen a surge in attacks by members of the Islamic State. At least 13 people have been killed in the past three weeks. The attacks, as seen in the video, are claimed by the Islamic State. Uh, there are growing concerns that the offensives they lead uh, are getting closer to the total headquarters. The Southern African military forces are also at the same time withdrawing from the country. Security analysts say that this withdrawal can lead to a vacuum in areas where it once operated. We see that uh, the, the, the current uh, placement of, uh, or deployment of uh, Samim uh, is coming to an end at the end of July. So we do not know whether that is they are going to extend that, but indications are that it might not be extended because we saw that even uh, the special forces of the South African contingents already been withdrawn. We saw that uh, a lot of the soldiers from, uh, from Botswana has been withdrawn and they are, have not been replaced. And that leave, leaves a tremendous vacuum in the areas where they have been operational, especially in Makumia area, but also towards the Mashumbua, the prior era. And these people, they know that the longer they can keep this area unstable, the longer it will take for Total to, to return and to, to lift the force majeure. Many stakeholders, including Total, hope that the Rwandan army consisting of some 2,800 troops would be able to remain in the country to help assist the Mozambican army to help combat and fight the insurgents. And finally, in the Africa Cup of Nations, Equatorial Guinea claimed a clean 4-2 victory over Guinea-Bissau in Abimpe before Nigeria's Super Eagles beat host Ivory Coast 1-0. Justice Baidu with more from Ivory Coast. It was one of those games that you wouldn't really expect that uh, uh, number of goals. The game between Equatorial Guinea 
and Guinea-Bissau. It wasn't really one of those fancied games because there were two other big games that were going to be played later today. Everybody's eyes were on these two latter games. But this game actually did not just produce uh, six goals. It did also produce the first uh, um, hat-trick of the tournament. Uh, the, uh, um, the captain of the uh, Equatorial Guinea side, he did put in three goals and that was an exciting day. Equatorial Guinea, they dominated from start to finish and they now uh, have gone on top of that group, um, making that group a very, very dicey one. That also includes uh, Ivory Coast, the host nation, who were hoping to be able to uh, win against uh, Nigeria, another tough side on the continental uh, um, uh, level at least, and be able to at least ensure that they had one leg, one foot in the next round already. Now, having lost uh, one nail to Nigeria, it is really, really open with, now they, 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 they are, they've gone up until third in that group and it's really, really dicey for them as they ready themselves for the final round of matches in that particular group. And for our final match of the day on Thursday, heavyweights Egypt faced Ghana in a nail-biter of a game that saw Liverpool's Mo Salah subbed off, injured after 45 minutes. That, though, is all we have time for for Iron Africa for now. Thanks for joining us. Do so again if you can. Till then, take care.